Hello, everyone. Hi. Awesome. So thank you all for coming and joining today. Super excited. Oh, Montana. <laughs> hey, Paula. Um, hey, Shama. Do you have your hand up? Or is that a mistake? Hand Can up. you hear me? We have handouts. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear, me? hear you. Yes, I can. I'm at work, and I have my earphone on. Hi. <laughs> well, interesting. I'll be doing a lot more listening. Okay. All righty. Um, Cindy, I'm going to let you manage this, because I see other people raising their hand, but I think that was a mistake. We can. Are you on webinar? Yes. You did a you did a webinar, not just a regular one, right? Yeah, but it says so because mm -hmm. we have attendees. Um, so there should be. I will manage the. Okay. And all, and I will give you questions that come from the Facebook page. That's no problem. Thank you. Um, so all you have to do is when you go live, make sure you choose the human design for everyone Facebook page and I'll put the zoom okay. link. All right. I see the thing. So I'm about to go live. Doing okay. <laughs> I I had to log in as Karen to put it on her page. No, because you're an admin, so but that's okay. Oh, okay, okay. So you sh okay. it should have come up as a as one of your choices, but go ahead and do it. Log on as Karen. That's fine. Okay, here we go. Human design for everyone. Got it. <laughs> You're now streaming. And it says you're live on Facebook. So tell everybody hi. All right. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. I'm super excited to, I love talking about parenting. I have three kids, so it's definitely a topic that I um, read about, listen to, uh, learn about constantly. And today I have some things that I want to share with you. I am going to share my screen real quick. Parenting by design, bringing out the best in That's your child. Not what we're seeing. That's not what we're seeing. We're seeing your the Zoom Pro account. Oh. Stop sharing and share again the other one. Okay, okay. Thank you. Now we got it. Yay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. 
Okay, so today we're going to be talking about parenting by human design. Um, a few weeks ago, I did a class on parenting and um, the needs that every child has, and I'm going to tie that together with human design to bring, really help support everyone in bringing out the best in their child. Parenting is an adventure, and there are... <laughs> but could you go out of the slide share, because the, the slides are actually cutting off. So we're not seeing, so, but no. Oh, I know what you mean. Okay. Don't go full screen, just show us your slides. Okay, let me make this bigger. Does, is that better? That's my head. Okay, cool. Yes, my head. Okay, so parent, and y'all will get these slides if y'all if they get cut off or anything. Um, parenting, there are places in your heart you don't even know exist until you love a child. And if you have children, you know as soon as they're born, before you really even know them, you give them a name, and this deep sense of fierceness and um, total care and unconditional love just pours over your child and it lasts a lifetime literally today I want to talk about how do we really see your our kids because a lot of times what happens is we have all of these personal con experiences that we've had throughout our life which have conditioned us the way that our parents have raised us the the town that we were raised in the city we grew up in this the country we grew up in. Um, human design shows us and gives you an energy blueprint. It shows you your child's um, unique strategy in the way that they interface with the world on an energetic level and how you can support that. Sometimes whenever our child children are developing, we are a little confused and a little worried because a lot of the times as our children are growing up we are <laughs> taking everything that they're doing and we say, and we feel like it's a reflection of us so whenever our children lie cheat steal which is all normal by the way for a four-year-old to do we freak out and we kind of uh, you know, just we want that behavior to stop and so we punish our kids or put them in time out when a lot of the times um, really understanding where your child is at developmentally, you can ask your child, you know, how did it feel when you lied? How did it feel when you cheated? How did it feel when you stole, you know? <laughs> uh, what if someone did that to you? Is really gonna support them during that developmental stage because at four years old, their brain has just went a major U-Haul and they are learning to think abstractly. And because of that, they are now learning how to lie. <laughs> But the good news is they're also developing their moral conscience. And so during that time, you want to support that and not, see, and whenever you see them doing these behaviors, take it as a reflection of you or any, anything that has to do with your values as a family. It's normal and it's something that um, is, gonna ha is bound to happen. And they're going to go through more of those as they get older. And then the mistaken motivation is, your child, um, when they don't have words to communicate, they will act out. They will misbehave. They will hit their sibling and pull their hair and argue with you. And it is not, in, whenever kids are doing that, it's because they don't have the words to articulate hey, some of my needs aren't getting met. Can you please support me? I need some more quality time with you. Or I need to start taking control of this part of my life. They, they usually don't learn how to say that until they're much older. And so knowing that the only reason children misbehave is because they are communicating to you allows you to ask a question, what is my child trying to communicate to me right now? Instead of reacting to the behavior, which teaches them that if my mom, my mom will give me negative attention whenever I do this, and negative attention is better than any attention. And if they don't feel like they're getting 
any attention from you, they know how to get your attention really quick. Misbehave, right? <laughs> and so a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about the needs of every child. And I just want to reiterate that again, because every child needs attention. Attention is a legitimate human need. It never goes away. Every child needs to feel powerful. They need to feel in control of their life and independent as they grow. They need to feel capable and confident, like they can complete things and achieve things. And they need to feel lovable. They need to feel like they are worthy of love and no matter what, you will love them. And whenever children misbehave, you can interpret what need they're asking you for based on how you, the parent, are feeling. And so if you are irritated and annoyed, and let's just say, for example, you get on the phone and you've been waiting on this phone call all day and you finally get on the phone and you're talking and your child starts crying and pulling you and mom, mom, I need you, I need you, mom, mom. And you get really irritated and really annoyed. You immediately know instead of, oh, go away, stop. I need, I'm on a call, you know. You immediately know, oh, their attention need is, isn't is getting met, and they're asking me for attention. And it's, and because you've asked that question, you know, you can tell your child, you know what, as soon as I get off this phone, me and you are going to go play together. We're going to go color together. We're going to go play Legos together. <laughs> and then your child knows that they're going to get that attention from you, and they will give you that time to take the phone call. When your child is asking for their power needs to be met, um, a really good example is a child makes a huge mess in the living room, an area that is not theirs to make a mess in, <laughs> and you want them to pick it up. Or maybe your child is refusing to brush their teeth, and you want to hold them down and brush their teeth for them. Um, you, the parent, whenever you're asking, what is it my child's communicating right now? If you feel stubborn, if you feel like you want to control them, that you must make them obey, then you know that your child is asking to feel powerful, to be in control of that. And so um, if there's a huge mess, then, you know, you can ask your child, you know, messes don't belong in here. I don't want to throw your toys in the trash can. And I know that you really care about these. So where is a better place for you to play with these? Or in the toothbrush situation, you can say, it seems like you don't re you're not really ready to brush your teeth right now. Do you want to wait five minutes? Do you want to wait? three minutes and um, depending how old your child is, um, they love, if you have a four year old and you say four minutes, they'll always choose the four minutes, <laughs> you know, cause that's their age. Um, and lovable, whenever your children are seeking to, to feel loved by you, they will do something to hurt you. They might break um, a, a vase or hide your jewelry or, um, you know, uh, something like that where you'd get really upset. They might, um, you know, throw, throw something of yours away or, um, rip a shirt or something. And you're like, oh, you want to hit them back, either grounding them or spanking them or, they take their phone away for a month, for a month. And if you have teenagers, you know, they can't, that's super unrealistic. They can't go a month without that phone. Right. <laughs> and so wanting to hurt them back, you can immediately ask the question, what is my child communicating to me? Oh, my child wants to know that they are lovable. And so you respond in kind, letting them know, Hey, I don't know what happened here, but no matter what, you know, I love you. And we need, and we're gonna we're gonna take work on this together, or we're gonna take responsibility. You're gonna take responsibility for this, and I'm gonna be there with you. And when you are asking, "What is my child communicating?" and you know the triggers and the emotions that are getting triggered within you and what they mean, then you immediately know how to support your child. When you know your child's human design, you take that to the next level and your human design, right? In human design, there are five energy types and each type has a role. There's the manifester, the projector, the reflector, the generator, and the manifesting generator. The manifestors are here to initiate. They have a lot of energy and they're here to take action. 
Um, and if you don't let them take action, they can get pretty angry pretty fast. They will typically struggle with power needs not getting met because when they want to do something and you, as a parent, stop them from doing what they want to do, then you can um, see a lot of anger. And sometimes they don't know when enough is enough. So that temper tantrum can last a long time. <laughs> um, you want to teach your manifestor child to inform you, to ask permission. Um, so that, and you also want to give them a lot more freedom than your other children. For example, you may have a manifester who is the baby in the family, but he acts more like the firstborn. And that's really typical because a lot of manifestors need to do things on their own. They, they, it's not necessarily that they don't want to be part of a group because they do, but they need to be able to not be coddled <laughs> you know they they thrive on being independent being independent and so whenever your child your manifest or child is informing you and telling you what they're doing or what they want to do and then as long as it's developmentally appropriate age appropriate you can give them that breeder within certain borders and parameters that you set up um, something that's really typical with manifestors and i have experienced this with my manifestor son who's nine years old, um, manifestors really have this creativity that lives within them and they just act on it impulsively. <laughs> and they just go out into the world and, you know, whenever they're young, they just do whatever they want to do. And there have been a lot of times where my manifestor son um, was riding his bike and he saw something and he went here and he went there and he went on some trails and we have a fields in the back of our houses and he was out there and he came back and then he went to a friend's house and he went inside the friend's house and he had left his bike in the field so I didn't know where he was I was looking everywhere and I had to call the police because I didn't know where my son is and right after I got off the phone with the police um, and they're sending an officer my son walks out of the house to go get his bike and I'm like ah where have you been and so I didn't even I didn't even know he had left the house <laughs> you know he didn't even tell me he wanted to go anywhere and then all of a sudden he's not there it's extremely scary and that's happened more than once so make sure that your manifestor knows that they need to talk to you first they need to tell someone where they're going or what they're doing to me so that way you don't get scared when you don't know where they are and it gives them the freedom to kind of go out and do what they want, as long as you have a pulse on where they are, and what they're doing, who they're with. The next type in human design that we're gonna talk about is the projector. And the projector is designed to coach and direct and lead and guide. They are the coaches on the sideline. They are the ones telling the players what to do, where to go, where to stand. Um, you know, dictating everyone's um, positions, and they're really good at it, and it's really innate. It's really something that it, they are just born with, and it's easy for them, and they immediately know what to do and how to do things for others, and they need and give advice to others. However, they don't always um, get that advice welcomed. You know, sometimes people aren't ready to hear that advice. And so that can make the projector struggle with attention because if you have a know-it-all, and I also have a projector son who is a know-it-all, <laughs> and we know enough about his design to give him the recognition and to tell him whenever we're ready to hear what he has to say so that we can really listen in an authentic way and not just, yeah, yeah, what did you want to say? Okay, whatever, you're done, right? That's not real attention and it's not going to satisfy him. Projectors also will struggle with lovability and so you might see them acting out in ways where it feels like they want to hurt you because if they aren't put in charge, if they're not here to do what they're designed to do, they don't feel like you love them, like you care about them and so making sure that they have responsibilities within the house or they are part of a, an outside organization, a club, a group where they can really enact those leadership qualities that they have is going to be key to their self-esteem. And then sometimes they don't feel capable. They don't feel confident. And so they'll experience an adequacy. And so you will struggle to know what's going on with my child. Why is he doing this? I know he's old enough 
to understand this concept or to do these chores? Why isn't he doing it? And it can be that projectors can get overwhelmed pretty easily because they are not designed to have this big, huge energy like some of the other types in human design. So they need to rest a lot and they need to be, um, and they need to, they struggle with knowing when enough is enough. If they, can, if they overdo it, then you're going to see your projector laying on the couch instead of doing their chores. And they're going to be, you know, on electronics watching a video. And you're going to be thinking, hey, if you can watch that video, you can fold up those towels sitting next to you. <laughs> right? <laughs> but that's not always the case. And so um, projectors really need to be invited. There's a lot of power that comes from an invitation. And an invitation is not them saying, hey, I want to do this. And you saying, okay, an invitation is you telling them, hey, I really want you to head this. Or, hey, we're going to go out as a family this Friday night. You're heading this. Decide what um, would be the best fit for everyone, where we're going to go eat. And then this is how much money we have. And what do you want to do? You know, and really invite them into being leading some part of the family. If you do family, um, family, um, oh, I forgot the word, <laughs> family time. Yeah, family, family meetings. Thank you. <laughs> if you do family meetings, have them lead the meeting. You can actually alternate between everyone. And that um, really gives them a lot of confidence whenever they're leading and guiding because they're born to do it. If they don't get those invitations, it can lead to a lot of bitterness and blaming, which is why they'll struggle with feeling lovable, with feeling inadequate. And you'll see a lot of those behaviors come out. The other thing for a projector is they need to be listened to. Projectors are, um, I'll tell you a little quick story. I have a friend who's also, who does human design. She's also an acupuncturist. And so she incorporates the two. And she will block out more time for projectors, her projector clients, because they need to talk out what's going on with them. And she says, you know what? They usually solve their own problems. You know, they come in and they talk and I just listen and I just kind of repeat back what, they, what they've said to me. You know, oh, it sounds like you're really stressed about this and this and that. And then by the end of everything, they've got some acupuncture. They, they've solved it. They figured it out. They know what they're going to do and they have that direction. And that is what a projector needs. They really don't necessarily need to be given advice. <laughs> you know, even if they are younger than you and shorter than you, they don't always need your advice. They actually have a lot of um, knowingness within them already. And they really just need someone to listen to them, kind of talk it out. So your projector child might talk more and they really need you to sit down and give them that undivided attention while they talk it out. The next type in human design we're gonna talk about is the reflector. Whenever you're talking to the reflector, you wanna ask open-ended questions. You want the reflector to talk things out as well because the reflector is this energy type that can take in a lot of people's energy and amplify it. They are designed, they're almost like um, an audience. They are, everyone in the audience is watching a movie and they're having an experience while they're watching the movie. And that's kind of like with the reflector. It kind of is taking everything in and then it's having a whole bunch of experiences and then it's taking that energy and directing it out so you can kind of understand what's going on in the world around you or with the movie, if you will. The reflector is designed to um kind of be the barometer of health of wellness of love in the family and the community wherever they are a part of because they are able to take in other people's energy and so if your reflector child is struggling you want to take a look in the mirror as a parent <laughs> You know, is something going on with you that you haven't really told your reflector, but your reflector child kind of knows and senses? Um, are you stressed out about something? Uh, maybe a lot of pressure at work uh, or a new project? Or where is that projector? Um, 
uh, struggling at? Are they struggling in school? Are they struggling outside of school in an extracurricular activity? Who are they around? What environment are they in? You really want to take in all of that into consideration because sometimes if you take the reflector out of an environment, they can change really quickly, really, um, because they're not taking in those energies. So reflectors do need a lot of alone time so that they can discharge the extra energy that they're picking up throughout the day. And they also need a lot of recognition because it's easily it's easy to get ignored whenever you're taking everyone else's energy in people don't necessarily see the real you because in this environment you're behaving this way and in that environment you're behaving this way and then if you're by yourself you're kind of behaving that another way and so really spending that quality of time with your reflector asking them questions consistently to figure out you know depending on their age what's your favorite color that today what's your favorite song this week um you know and getting and staying uh, keeping a pulse and keep continuing to recognize them and figuring out what's changed with them is really going to support them and in, in getting that recognition and that attention reflectors need a lot of time to make decisions and so if there's a major decision coming up, like maybe your reflector daughter is going to try out in a school play, the more information she has in advance is really going to support her in making that decision because a lot of the times we don't give uh, people a lot of time to make decisions. You know, it's like, do it now. We need to answer now. But reflectors really do need that time because they are kind of a product of their environment and to a certain extent they are taking other people's energy in and so if they don't have time to be alone and discharge that energy and make decisions from when they're in their own energy then they're going to be making decisions that are really like for other people and then they're going to question their lovability <laughs> because you only love me when I act like this person or that person. <laughs> and so um, the other thing about a reflector is it's really important that they have uh, people who are consistent in their life, meaning the same group of friends or, um, you know, how every year kids cl switch classrooms and they have a new teacher and they have new students and they don't always have the same kids that were in the grade before. It's really supportive for the reflector if you can kind of talk to the school and let them know like, hey, these are the friends that my reflector or that my daughter has. And if she could be in cl the same class, that would really help her as a student. The next type, the generator. The generator is a type in human design that's designed to work this is or or do stuff and move but they are really designed to um respond to life whereas the manifester can kind of has this creativeness inside of them they go and they just act on it the generator has that too but they're not designed to act on their internal inspirations they're designed to wait until something shows up in the reality and then use their gut to make their decisions and so really supporting them and being able to connect to their gut or their conscience is really going to support them and the way that they do that is by being asked yes or no questions and if they're not being asked yes or no questions if they're given too many choices it can lead to frustration, indecisiveness, and um, if your generator is frustrated, maybe ask them some yes or no questions to try to get them reconnected to their gut, reconnected to what's correct for them. And as a generator, their need is typically, not all the time, going to be attention and lovability. And attention because they don't always know what to respond to, you know, and, and if they are not using their gut to make decisions, they may not be following through. Um, and also lovability, because if they are, um, if they're not getting um, their attention needs met, then they may not feel lovable.
and that's true with all kids. So. Okay, and the next slide is the manifesting generator. The manifesting generator also is like the generator and like the manifester. And so on, in some ways they need to also be connected to the gut by asking yes or no questions. And they need to be informing, they need to be asking permission, they need to be in telling you what they're doing, making sure that you know where they are. They don't need attention like some of the other types per se because they are designed to multitask and so because of that ability to multitask they um are really good at being independent being on their own and going in and out of things however sometimes the manifester um will be doing too many things, you know, and they'll want to quit some of those things. And that should be okay for them as long as they're making that decision from their gut and not just, um, just you know, feeling frustrated or feeling angry and then just quitting and giving up. That's different. So knowing your human design as a parent, it gives you it gives your child an example of how to live authentically. And Cindy, do we have any questions right now? I just wanted to check in because I think I saw something. Um, no. Nina okay. was saying that she has an eight-year-old projector and there was some comments on Facebook that it's wonderful information. Awesome. Okay, so knowing your human design as a parent, gives your child an example of how to live authentically. Because if you are understanding, if you're a projector parent, you understand that you aren't going to have a whole bunch of energy to be doing chores. And you're going to be asking your kids to support you in that and to contribute in that way. And you're also going to be able to understand if your child, who um, is a manifesting generator, wants to be involved in a lot of things, but you as a projector don't have the energy to drive them to three different things, <laughs> you know, to three different activities. Uh, you're going to have to talk about that and say, yeah, look, I'll commit to this, but you need to find someone to give you rights to these other things, which a manifesting generator can do pretty easily. They're really independent in that way. So knowing your human design, it gives you new parenting strategies. And parenting is a skill. It needs to be updated from time to time. How many things that your parents did when you were a kid don't work on your kids? <laughs> you know, even spankings, they're not working on kids anymore. <laughs> you know, it is, I've heard so many stories about parents saying, well, my, that's what I, I'm asking. Well, why are you, why did, okay, why did you choose to do that? Well, that's what my parents did. That's what my parents did. Well, my mom did it with me and it worked. And it's not working with their kids. And so uh, parent, it has to be updated. There's so many um, advances that have happened since the time that you were growing up to now that your kids are on, it's a different, it's truly a different world. And that's why I'm teaching a class that ties human design with parenting strategies. It's called Parenting by Design. And this will, this is parenting tailored to your child. It's not a one size fits all thing. It will teach you um, how to build your child's self-esteem based on their human design type, a projector. If you give them a lot of, um, you know, independence and you don't really talk and you're asking them yes or no questions, they're not really going to realize that that's a good thing. You know, they're not going to feel loved. They're not going to feel recognized. They're, you know, they're going to be acting out. But if you can understand, oh, my projector needs me to listen to them. And then you say, you go to your projector and you say, it's so great to see you today. Thanks for being a part of this family and give them that recognition. And then they start talking to you and you listen. And then five minutes later, they're like, okay, I'm going to go outside and play. And you're like, okay, awesome. And they left feeling loved, feeling seen, feeling heard, feeling valued. And they contribute to the house because you're giving them there's that exchange going on. That is what this parenting class is about. It's eliminating power struggles. 
um, making sure that you're tapping in and listening to, okay, is what is my child trying to tell me with this behavior? Recognizing that it's communication and it's not just your kid being bad or spoiled or acting like their mom or acting like their dad, you know, it's, uh, it's really communication and how to develop so self-motivation within your child. Whenever a child gets that attention that they need and the way that they need it, they want to go do things on their own. They become self-motivated. They want to contribute to the house. They want to take responsibility for chores. And that takes things off your plate as a parent. For example, my um, projector son. Uh, projectors are not designed to do huge, arduous chores. <laughs> you know, like mowing the lawn. That's not something a projector, they can do it. It's just not something that is, may not be easy for them. Um, especially if you live in Texas, in Houston, where it's super humid and hot most of the time, you know, that will zap their energy really quick. Um, and so my son, who's a projector, he wanted to do the laundry. And uh, every year on their birthday, they get a new responsibility and they get to choose it because I want them to um, be involved. I want them to have a say and they get a say. And so. He wanted to do the laundry and we were like, uh, okay, <laughs> you know how important that is. You know how big that is. He's like, yeah, yeah, I want to do it. I want to learn how to do it. And initially he got really overwhelmed and he wasn't doing the laundry. And so at the next family meeting, he told us what was going on and we kind of complained about what was going on. And we all sat and strategized, how can we support you? Like, how would it make it easy? And we went through a lot of different trial and errors, error stages and weeks until we got it right. I bought a whole bunch of laundry, tall laundry bins, and we put those in our room. And depending on who you are, you will need maybe more than one, like my daughter. She puts, you know, stuff here and stuff there. And he just takes the bin and dumps it in the laundry, washes it, dries it takes it from the dryer, puts it back in the bin and puts it in your room and lets you know that it's clean. And you fold up your own clothes, you hang up your own clothes. The only thing he really folds is towels and he can handle that. Um, my other projector, excuse me, my other manifester son, he wanted to do the dishes. He, he was like, I'm not touching the clothes because I was thinking maybe they could do it together. <laughs> and he's like, uh -uh, I'm doing the dishes. I'm not touching those clothes. And so he does the dishes and he usually does them. Um, you know, he waits until, you know, Thursday to do the dishes and then um, stays up and does them while we're sleeping and then he goes to bed. And so he does it on his own terms and he, ha and he knows what time frame he can do it in and he has that independence and that control over when he can do his chore and um, how it can get done. And as long as the dishes are clean and we have them and he runs them through the dishwasher at least once a week, then, then it's great. And so developing that self-motivation within your children at an early age is really important because as they grow older, like my daughter, who is a teenager now, who's about to go to college soon, she um, studies on her own. She doesn't ask me for support with that. She writes her own papers. She um, um, a lot of the basketball, she's involved in, in sports and a lot of that stuff. She takes that on and um, enrolls in that and signs up for stuff on her own um, without me kind of pushing her or making her do any of that stuff. And because she's doing it and it's her choice, she's more involved. She's more um, committed. Um, and so developing that at an early age is really important and key. We did have um, a comment that came in. I don't know if yes. you'd like to hear it. I I mean, would. It's, a, it's true, the part I list, um, she has a projector dog, child, and it was. she says, she was the one who triggered me, and that led me to human design. I have a generator and a manifesting generator. When the projector came along, everything was changed. I was so <laughs> depressed and turned out the way that I hate myself. I was desperate and gave in and talked to myself Help me, and that was when human design came. Yay! Awesome. Yeah, 
And so in a way, your projector guided you to human design, <laughs> right? And so, yeah, absolutely. I hope that, uh, I hope she gets more invitations from you to, to guide you. And there was a couple um, comments on Facebook. Yeah. When you mentioned that skills are changing, David said parenting is a skill. Yes, spanking doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard that. I've heard it. <laughs> and also um, build self-esteem for your kid, like for a projector, give them a stage to contribute. Makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. And, and Mina says she's grateful for that human design came in so she could end. Awesome. Yeah, and whenever you're, whenever you know that you're building your kid's self-esteem and you don't have these power struggles because you know how to sidestep them and your kids are self-motivated, as a family, y'all are calmer. Y'all are cooperative. You enjoy being a parent because there's not all this weight and overwhelm going on. You're all supporting each other. How a family, whenever a family is doing that, it's, it's enjoyable. There's no more begging. There's no more screaming. There's no more bargaining with your child. <laughs> Although my kids, over the summer, <laughs> they have asked me to teach them how to negotiate because of um, my new, my negotiation skills, they have, they've started catching on to these techniques and they are very interested in them now. And instead, and you think, oh, they caught on to them. They don't work anymore. And that's not true because we've been doing them. They're used to them and they still work and they know how to do these techniques with each other because your kid is going to need attention from you, the parent, but also they're gonna need it from their brother. They're gonna need it from their sister. They're gonna need it from their sibling, from their dad. There's attention that my daughter can give my son that I can't give him. There's attention that his brother can give him that I can't give him, <laughs> you know? And that's really important. And so making sure that and your kids are getting attention from everyone in the family because everyone's aware of their human design, how to support each other, how to be effective, how to, what they will struggle with. You know, whenever you know that your manifester will struggle with not informing, then putting little notes on the door like, Tell me where you're going before you walk through this door, <laughs> you know, or if your projector is going to struggle with um, getting attention, then setting up a time every day that your family, that his siblings talk to him and spend time with him on their terms, not just like, hey, go spend time with your brother. <laughs> I'm locking you in your room. You know, it's like, okay, well, you know, you need to spend a little time with your brother today. So do you want to do that now? Or do you want to do that this evening? And letting them work it out and figure it out. And then they play together and they um, develop that brotherly bond, that sibling bond. So parenting by human design brings out the best in your child. And so this special offer for this class uh, is 147. It's normally a $500 class, $497. And I miss both ways. And uh, through this weekend, I'm going to be emailing y'all a link to this class. This, um, it is going to be 147. And then after this weekend, the price is going to go back up because this is a really intense class. It has a lot of, um, we look at everyone's human design in the class and their kids so that we can understand, so that we can really support each other. Um, uh, I don't want the class to grow super, super big, but um, yeah. I would You're also love. giving me so are you going to teach them negotiation skills too <laughs> yes yes y'all are going to learn that and it's really fun and it's really easy and it's um when your kids are going to support you in the negotiation process and whenever they do that they will follow through with whatever you have decided when a kid is in charge of what they're negotiating they follow through with it and you, the parent, are there to um, make sure that it's 
appropriate. It's age developmentally appropriate, <laughs> you know? And um, yeah. We did have a question come up. Uh, and then said, is this class only for parents or can it be used for your clients? Absolutely, absolutely. You can use it on clients, you can use it on, uh, or for parents. But a lot of the tools are, would probably work with clients, but it's, it's a lot of parenting. It's a lot of parenting, oh. but you're going to, you're going to get a really good insight to how hum, to look at the human design chart for you and for other and for kids. And so you'll be able to see how to do that with your client as well, how to look at your human design chart and your client's human design chart and understand their needs as well. And so it'd be, it's, I would recommend it for that as well. Um, if people have questions, they can post it under the Facebook video or they can post it yes. in the chat here. I think that this is the end of the content part. Did you want me to post the link? Yes, you gave indeed. Me? Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate you doing that. Yeah, and I will so add. Does this, does this work with your adult children? So those of us that have adults. Yes, it does. It really does. Okay, because I have my brother and my sister are older. It works with them. I know their human design chart. <laughs> my brother is a generator. My sister is a generator, but she um, she is a generator that really needs a lot of attention. And so making sure that you're checking in. I'm checking in with her frequently texting her and she doesn't always respond to me but having that seeing that text message or having knowing that I called and she can call me later and it's it's not an emergency obviously it was an emergency I'm 911 coming out you know but she just feels loved she feels seen she feels cared for and um my brother on the other hand is a little bit different and so with him, it's more FaceTime interaction and scheduling meetups and hanging out with him. And so uh, we work out together. We um, just do it. We'll just go hang out at coffee shops together, <laughs> talk about our phones, <laughs> the new phone coming out, the new Google phone coming out, or the new iPhone. So um, there's more FaceTime. And because I know their human design, it's so easy. It's so easy. What their needs are or, or what they might need from you. Yes. Yes, and you, exactly. You learn how to get your needs met from right. the, so the, Is that part of the negotiation skills? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And whenever in, you know how to request that need without feeling um, shy or um, timid or intimidated, um, and and really you know asking people to support you and say look this is could you ask me a yes or no ask me that in a yes or no question you know if you're a generator or questions come up okay awesome how about kids and special needs like kids with asperger's syndrome that's a really good point yeah absolutely a lot of um a lot of autism is you know this big huge movement now and we're seeing a lot of kids and there's all these different levels and absolutely I would definitely um, recommend any child especially a child that has autism you can definitely get their energy blueprint and you can understand oh this kid needs to um, has a lot of energy this kid needs to exercise every day. This kid needs to be out in nature or this kid needs to sleep by themselves. You know, we're going to learn all that stuff in the class. And then is, um, then Preet asks, is this always accurate? Are there any exceptions? Um, I, I don't, I can't think of any exceptions, maybe if you don't have an accurate human design chart, but even if you don't have a human design chart, even if you don't know your child's human design, you will be able to understand your child 
based on knowing what your child's needs are. And every child has the same needs. Every human has the same needs, right? And then how to interpret their behavior. You will understand, oh, I'm feeling really annoyed. My son needs attention. My child needs attention, you know? And then get, saying, hey, when's the last time mom, me, me and mom, me, you and mom really hung out? When's the last time you told me what your favorite color was based on their age, you know? And like my daughter and I, her and I, we go out on dates. We go to the movies. We go hang out at um, restaurants and coffee shops and bookstores and just drive around in the car sometimes. I mean, it's just um, just getting that one-on-one -on -one quality time with her is, is really key. And knowing that she's a generator, I know that whenever we're spending that quality time with together, I'm going to be asking her a lot of yes or no questions. She's going to be telling me stories and this and that. And then I'm going to ask her, you know, like, do you know where you want to go to eat? Do you know what you want to eat? Do you want to eat now? Do you want to eat later? Would you rather eat later? <laughs> you know, just like one after the other, we're going to be asking, and then she's going to, I'm a generator. So she's going to be asking me the same yes or no questions. And I, we're going to be syncing up and by asking each other those yes or no questions, but asking her those yes or no questions, she is connected to her gut, which is what she's designed to do. And whenever she feels that power and that those clicks that you get whenever you're responding using your gut as a generator or a manifesting generator, it's really empowering. It's like, no, I don't want to actually, I don't want to eat now. Mm -mm. Oh, you know? okay. So, cause I met, Mem Preet had asked about if this works with clients too. So when you're getting, sometimes a person might not, okay. I'm trying to phrase this right. Sometimes a person <laughs> might not be living up to the, full potential, but when they can find out that it's, you know, they were energetically inclined to react a certain way or to need, you know, they need a lot of, need a lot of um, movement or exercise, or they might have, you know, they, their hearing might be very sensitive or, you know, they might be more prone to need more rec recognition in that, that, when you're working with a client or your children or with, you know, you know, even your neighbors, when you're taught, if you know theirs, that given the tools that you'll, you'll teach and the knowledge with about human design, that would really help people in all their interactions with other people. Correct. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. If you're at work and you don't know someone's human design, but, your coworkers really annoying you, chances are they need some attention, right? <laughs> or if you feel really stubborn, like, oh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna give this coworker some work and she is gonna do it. Probably there's a power struggle going on there, right? And so this class is also gonna show how to work within those situations. Um if you have the human design chart, immediately you can see, oh, well, this is probably what this person is going to need. And if you um, proactively meet those needs for the person that you're talking to or with, then they'll immediately feel seen and heard. And then you won't necessarily get those power struggles. You won't get that, those annoying things that they do that drive you crazy because they're going to do them to someone else, right? They want someone else's attention. They got yours. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I felt it, so now, I don't, now you don't need it. Um, so just in case, just to reiterate, the link to sign up will come in an email if they're on mm -hmm. um, Karen's email list, or it's also pinned on the, under the video on Facebook. And it was also, I put it in the chat. Thank you, Cindy. And so, and, but the discount is only good through this weekend, correct? Yes, there's Sunday at midnight. Then I'm going to raise the price. And how exciting. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. 
And we, I think we kind of, so Jan is asking, I have no kids. Does that matter? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Because I actually teach this to a lot of um, um, daycares. Um, what do I want to say? Those after school camps at the YMCA, people who don't have kids. But if you're interacting with kids or people in general, this is really good because it's going to show you how to identify a person's need based on how you are feeling and then how to meet that need if you choose to do that, right? If you really like the person, you're going to support them, right? But if you don't really like them, you're going to be like, oh, they need attention or they don't feel in control of their life. They don't feel, they feel, you know, really, um, they need to be more independent. They need to be more, um, take charge of some things. They need more leadership roles. You'll be able to have that and understand that whether you have kids or not. And then whenever you do have kids or if you're in a relationship with another person or like a coworker or a lover or a parent and you have this information, you can quickly understand how to make that connection and build rapport. So... Um, we're coming up at the top of the hour, with like five minutes left. And you were going to make, because I know that you put what we would be feeling in one of the slides so that you could identify what the unmet. You were going to give us the slide handout and we would post it in the description of the video. Is that correct? Yes, I, I will be doing that. And I'll also put it in the email that I send out. So we'll do that. And I'm not... Seeing any more questions, did you just want to kind of wrap it up? Yeah. Or yeah. I, I, I can come up with questions if you'd like. <laughs> oh, I can be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give me a question. One more question, Cindy. One more question. Okay. So I'm going to go with if you have, say you go into a party at you're going into a neighborhood block party mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you, you see all these kids running and, running and it just and they're just like you're trying to carry your food and of course you're gonna react like oh my god <laughs> now is that because of their unmet energy need or because of my unmet energy need that anger is coming in? And that is the question you want to ask yourself, right? Instead of just reacting and blaming the kids, you want to check in with yourself first, right? And asking the, the question, like if it's something like that, of course there's going to be all this excitement, all this variety, all these choices. Kids are going to be crazy and they're going to supposed to, right? They're supposed to run around and enjoy themselves and have fun and everyone's supposed to come together and just, you know, relax and, and know that the kids are safe and everyone there cares about them and is going to reprimand them if they need to or play with them or chase them, you know, play tag. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, in that situation, you definitely want to check in if there if a situation is happening where all of a sudden your kid is crying for a popsicle stick and having a huge temper tantrum, <laughs> then you really want to check in with, okay, how am I feeling? Am I feeling annoyed by this? Am I feeling like, oh, my child is going to obey me. They are not going to eat that popsicle. Or are you feeling like, what is my child doing here? Why is she doing this? You know, you're feeling confused. Or maybe you're feeling like you want to hurt your child, like, oh, I'm going to ground her when she gets home because she humiliated me, <laughs> right? Then these are all things that one behavior can have all these different meetings. So you really want to check in with yourself and see how you, the parent, the person are feeling and, um, and go from there because okay. it can look one way. But this, this leads on to a quick follow on because I got two more minutes. Mm -hmm. Can your child be reflecting how you, the parent, because it can your can your child be responding to how you, the parent, so say the temper tantrum, is actually because they're picking up that you're stressed. I mean, is that is that something that when we're identifying that it's just yeah. Enough? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of times children's behavior is because they're emulating it from someone else, right? <laughs> and so based on the situation 
and where you're at, if you're at a block party and that's going on, you're going to obviously take into account the environment, all of the people that they're taking in other people's energy, especially if they're a reflector, they're taking in all this energy and they need to just go be alone. <laughs> you know, um, if you're having, if you're at home by yourself and then your child starts doing that, then yeah, definitely you, it could be that they are reflecting you, the parent in some way. But usually if you're asking that question, what is my child trying to communicate with me? And you're giving them, you're supporting them and meeting that need. You do that for yourself too. So it has a dual benefit. If you're being really aware with your child or with a, a client or a coworker, you're going to be doing that with yourself too. If you're like at home making coffee and you get really frustrated and there's no one around to blame, <laughs> then you could, might want to ask yourself, um, why am I feeling frustrated, right? I'm feeling really annoyed with myself right now. Okay, well, I need to really look at how much self-care have I given myself and, um, and checking in with yourself is really going to be key. Oh, that's, um, so that's one of the, another one of the tools that you probably cover is parenting self-care too. So it's not. Well, yeah, you can, like I said, you can use this everywhere with yourself, with your clients, with your coworkers, with your boss, with your partner, with your uh, business partner, with your lover, with your kids, um, with your parents and your siblings. It's universal. Well, we're at, we're at the top of the hour. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, We'll be posting stuff under the video and sending an email out. So look for that. And any questions under there, I will answer those. So post any comments or questions. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.